What's up guys, Keir from RugbyStrengthCoach.com. Today's video, I wanna talk about a great new study that's gonna be published soon by the French researcher J.B. Marin and his co-workers. I picked up this study from JB's interview with Brett Contreras over at Brett's blog. If you haven't read it already, go click on that link below and uh, check it out because it's got some great information in there. Here is JB's study in a nutshell. He looked at a bunch of elite male rugby union players and he wanted to find out what was the strongest predictor of sprint performance over 30 meters, which is obviously quite an applicable distance for rugby. And it goes without saying that sprint performance is massive for rugby. We're a running based sport, we cover thousands of meters uh, within the game. Um, Nearly everything we do is running based and if we can improve our ability to sprint, we're going to see dramatic improvements in performance, not only in running itself, but via transfer to other explosive movements like tackling, rocking, mauling and changing direction. Now conventional wisdom would say that the vertical jump is going to be one of the strongest predictors of sprint speed. So JB looked at this and what he actually found was that there was no correlation whatsoever between vertical jump height and vertical jump peak power and performance over that 30 meters. In fact, what he found the strongest correlation for sprint performance was horizontal sprint power expressed in watts per kilo. And I thought this was interesting and quite significant for rugby strength and conditioning for a couple of reasons. One is, like I said, the conventional wisdom says that vertical jump is the strongest predictor of sprint performance. And if we can just increase vertical jump, we're going to create faster athletes. The second is that we look at research and we see that obviously Olympic lifters are some of the best vertical jumpers on the planet and we assume that if we dedicate a ton of time and effort into learning, perfecting and training the Olympic lifts that obviously our vertical jump is going to increase and again we're going to increase sprint speed and improve our rugby performance on the field. Now I've talked a little bit before about the work that Brian Mann did in his PhD at the University of Missouri and he actually found out in writing his thesis that there was no relationship in his athletes between the 1RM in the power clean and vertical jump performance. So the first point I'd make is even if you are training the Olympic lifts and you're doing them heavy, it doesn't necessarily guarantee you an increase in vertical jump. There are factors that you have to consider within that exercise like movement velocity, which Brian talks about in his velocity based training book. The second point I would make is, even if you are performing the Olympic lifts in a way that is going to increase vertical jump height, JB's study has demonstrated, at least within this population of elite male rugby union players, that you're not guaranteed to improve sprinting speed. Which is obviously quite disappointing for a lot of people out there who invest a ton of time and effort in learning those lifts because they believe that they're superior compared to other exercises for increasing speed and power. But when we remind ourselves of what factors actually make an exercise specific or not to improving sprinting speed, we shouldn't really be surprised at the findings of JB's study. I talk a lot about Verkashansky's criteria of dynamic correspondence and the things which make an exercise more or less specific. For example, the range of movement, where within that ROM we produce peak force, the movement velocity, the contact time, the magnitude and direction of force, and the degree of muscular stretch which is occurring. We only have to look at analysis of sprinting to see that that and an Olympic lift, for example a clean or a snatch, are actually quite different. So really it shouldn't be that surprising that we're not seeing such a strong correlation between vertical jump height and sprint performance in athletes who've accumulated quite a good deal of training age. We know from Bondarchuk and other Soviet scientists that when we're in the earlier stages of the training career, we will see a direct transfer from general exercises to specific movement patterns on the field. However, once we increase our training age and the training stimulus loses its potency, we have to use more and more specific exercises to see that transfer and improvement on the field of play. So what does this mean for you and improving your performance and that of your athletes? Well, the first thing I would say is that if you're performing the Olympic lifts or any other vertically orientated exercise in the gym for explosive power output, it doesn't necessarily guarantee you an increase in sprinting speed. Rather, it probably gives you an increased foundation of performance on which to develop and train more specific exercises to increase sprinting speed. So rather than a guarantee of increased speed, it's a guarantee of increased potential to run faster. If you fall into the camp of athlete who feel that the Olympic lifts are not necessarily worth the time and effort it takes to learn and perfect them, I would say this is probably a little bit more evidence that you don't necessarily need to start doing that in your training program because it's not a guarantee of increased sprinting speed. What this study demonstrates for me is that once you've accumulated a certain amount of training age, the Olympic lifts actually just become general in nature and not specific. For this reason, it means that they're interchangeable and you can use exercises which have a much shorter learning curve and are far simpler to learn. So things like uh, trap bar jumps, 
barbell jump squats, dumbbell jump squats, and so on. And what it means is once you've reached that training age where the transfer ceases, you are gonna to have to build upon that foundation and start to utilize exercises which are slightly more specific in terms of increasing sprinting speed. And by that, I mean exercises which emphasize that horizontal component of force production, which JB talks a lot about in his work and which Brett talks about in his ebook review of sprinting research. So for this reason, it's gonna be wise to include exercises which have a horizontal displacement of the load in your gym program. Exercises like hip thrusts, glute bridges, step ups, kettlebell swings, and so on are really, really good ideas to implement. Remember also that you're gonna to have to use exercises which have a higher degree of dynamic correspondence to the sprinting action. So this means exercises with a higher movement velocity, a shorter contact time, greater horizontal force production, and a higher degree of muscular stretch than the Olympic lifts. And by that, I mean things like horizontally orientated jumps, medicine ball throws, and plyometrics, and of course, sprinting itself. Having a balanced emphasis of all of these different training tools within your program is probably gonna cover all of your bases and provide you with the biggest increase in sprinting speed that is gonna benefit your performance on the field. If you like this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you want more information, go to rugbystrengthcoach.com slash blog.